What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Welcome to the Schmodown Rundown, the official after show for the Movie Trivia Schmodown. I am Brad Gilmore. I am your host, and I'm joined by my guy all the way in Chi Town. How are those bulls doing? Not very good. What's up, Frank Janish? I'm doing pretty good, Brad, despite the bulls. And look, we're just a few weeks out from the start of the season. Uh, I'm very excited because I cannot wait to get back into match play. It's been it's been too long of a break, if you ask me. It does feel like quite a while, right? And and I think in all actuality, it'll be about a month, I guess. Yeah. A little over a month. But it feels forever. This is how I feel when the NBA season goes in the off season. That's the longest summer of my life. And this one has really topped it. This has been a long, hard, cold winter. I don't know if you've experienced anything like this before, Frank, but in Houston this last week, we had winter. <laughs> I mean, it was like in the 20s. And there were ice on the roads. <laughs> yeah, you had you had twenties, which is above zero. I, I, on the other hand, for the past several weeks, have been dealing with negative temps, negative fifteen, twenty degrees. So uh, I know what you're experiencing and more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. Chicago has it much worse. Uh, Booker and I were talking about that earlier. I, I, I actually said on our um, on heated conversation. By the way, let me plug this up top. Heated conversations this week was a packed show. We had uh, Bill Goldberg, who's going into the WWE Hall of Fame. Samoa Joe talks about his injury, and actor Michael Rapaport all on the same show, stack show. But, nice. uh, we were talking about it too. He, Booker's like, "Can you imagine what people in Chicago feel like?" I'm like, "No, I was just talking to my man Frank about this." But anyway, that's off topic. We're here to talk movie trivia schmodown. That's our reasoning for being here. And Frank, there are a couple news items that dropped. This week, and we're going to get into those, but first I want to tell people what they're going to hear on the show today. We have two very special interviews that we conducted, the first of which is with Thad Williams, the interim commissioner for the movie Trivia Schmodown. We're going to ask Thad if he's going to accept Christian's challenge. We're going to figure out how he got involved in the movie Trivia Schmodown and how he even got this interim commissioner job to begin with. And then we talk to the Golden Mike herself the woman who might have the most dominant faction going into the 2018 season. We're going to talk to Emma Fife. Emma Fife had a lot of great insight about her play in the movie Trivia Schmodown, about her faction, and about her role and how she got got it. So a lot of cool stuff from Thad and Emma Fife, right, Frank? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I was especially excited to hear from Emma because, of, like you just said, she has this new faction, and it was it was a real pleasure to talk to her about that. So we're going to get into those interviews here momentarily, but first we got to talk a little bit of movie trivia schmodown news. There was a match made uh, here on social media by Christian Harloff. He announced a match between two people who I don't think we would ever thought we would see a match against in the 2018 season. And we heard about a new competitor in the inner geekdom division. Frank, why don't you tell us what's going on? So first off, uh, let's talk about the match that was made very recently between Ben Bateman and Dale the Dude. Uh, now, I have to say, I was there when this uh, match came to be, when it was confirmed. Uh, Christian walks over with Ben, and I'm sitting down with Dale, uh, and he walks over, looks at Ben, he goes, I'm sorry, looks at Dale, and he goes, for your first match, for, your first, for your, to start your career, Ben Bateman. And Dale couldn't believe it, that he was being handed this opportunity, and... Without hardly any hesitation, Dale absolutely agreed to this match. And he was a little bewildered that it was offered that he's going to go up against Ben, but he was all for it. And they shook on it, as you can see on Twitter and on the Facebook page. Uh, it, it was exciting to see that deal happen. Uh, Christian may not be the commissioner, but he is still wheeling and dealing. So, what do we think about this match, though? Ben Bateman, uh, who's a guy who's on your fantasy team, then you traded him for William Bibiani. Um, which he wasn't too happy about that we saw on social media uh, anyways. But Ben Bateman is a yeah. top-tier competitor in the movie Trivia Schmodown. You drafted him with your second pick for a reason. I mean, this guy was very impressive in team action. He held that team together in a lot of the games and matches that we saw. He's going to take on Dale the Dude, whom I don't know how Dale's going to do in the Schmodown, and that's a pretty tall order for your debut. Yeah, it's very interesting because Ben and Andrew Guy of Team Action, they debuted against uh, fans of people, first-timers, and late to the party, and that went down to the wire. They almost lost that one. And now Ben in the singles uh, division, 
is taking on Dale, a newcomer, a rookie, uh, for his singles debut, if you will, if you don't count the the five way that Ben was in the qualifier. Uh, but this is a one on one with Dale. You're right. I'm not sure how Dale's going to do. Um, because if we know anything about Dale, though, if you look at his documentary behind the scenes from the Spectacular, we know that if he gets any questions concerning the Tremors franchise, uh, he's in good shape. <laughs> Well, we'll see. We'll see. You know, I'll be rooting for Dale the Dude. I mean, all due respect to Ben Bateman, but I always root for the underdog. I want to see that happen. I want to see Dale the Dude upset and shock the world uh, in the movie trivia showdown in this upcoming season. Now, tell us about this new inner geekdom division player that was announced. Yeah, again, more breaking news just in the past few days here. Uh, it's been confirmed now by Christian himself that Sarah Stretton, if people remember Sarah Stretton, she was on box office breakdown with Tom Dagnino, uh, a.k.a. Finstock, a.k.a. Bobby Gucci, whatever you want to call him, and JTE. Uh, she's going to be back this season competing in the inner geekdom. So if you've been missing Sarah Stretton and that, that whole uh, box office breakdown uh, team, she's going to be back in the inner geekdom league. Uh, very exciting uh, for longtime fans of the Schmodown and of, Schmol- of Schmolville itself. Yeah, no, I think we're all excited to see that. Now, that's in the Inner Geekdom division, which is actually becoming my favorite division in the movie trivia Schmodown. But hey, guys, I also want to let you all know some more breaking news. Going down next week on the Schmodown rundown, Frank Janis, you had an opportunity to uh, get several great interviews on the red carpet for the movie trivia Schmodown awards. That were pre-taped, but they're going to air next week. I believe next Friday, if I have that correct. And we're going to have some special guest interviews. Eight special guest interviews. And let me tell you who they are. We're going to hear from Ben Bateman, Sam Levine, the Schmodown champ, singles division champion, Lon Harris, Rachel Cushing, Bobby Gucci, Tom Dagnino himself, my guy, Jay Washington, Classy Clark Wolf and Miss Movies Brianne Chandler all on the same show, all here on the Schmodown Rundown, and they're all conducted by my man Frank Janish. Frank, that's a that's a heavy lineup. Yeah, that's uh, I'm, I was real excited to talk to all those individuals, and they had a lot of great things to say. Um, you're definitely going to want to tune in for a, at least a couple of those interviews because some stuff happens that you're going to want to that you're going to want to hear. News might be broken, challenges might be made, there might be some some very juicy details revealed in those eight interviews. Once again, I mean, Ben Bateman, Sam Levine, Lon Harris, Rachel Cushing, Tom Dagnino, Jay Washington, Clark Wolf, Brianne Chandler, all on the show next week. But without further ado, let's get to who's on the show this week. We're going to have Emma Fife and Thad Williams. Let's throw to that first interview with the golden mic herself, Emma Fife. Right now on the Schmodown Rundown. Well, welcome back to the Schmodown Rundown, the official after show for the movie trivia Schmodown. I'm Brad Gilmore, joined by Frank Janish, and we said that we had a special guest interview, and she joins us right now on the show, the Golden Mike, Miss Emma Fife. Emma, how are you doing? I'm so great. Thank you for having me. Uh, my cats are currently in like I shot so there might be a ruckus happening in the background if that happens please ignore <laughs> it it's just my animals um one of my cats in particular just loves podcasts this is a true fact about him so so explain does he like the, he likes to just interject his opinion sometimes he your, does your... i will listen he's he is a very vocal cat he has a lot of feelings he loves people he's very very <laughs> friendly my other one if strangers come over to the house you will never see him uh <laughs> except if he sits at the top of the stairs and silently judges people and also make sure that they are not causing physical harm to myself or my roommate. I sort of wonder sometimes what would happen if somebody did attack us, if he if he would like spring into action or if he would just stay hiding upstairs. <laughs> yeah, I would like to see I would like to see an attack cat. You know, I've never really I mean, seen listen, one. Listen, He's scrappy, man. He's actually a very he's beautiful a Russian blue, but uh, <laughs> but he, yeah, he he thinks he's pretty tough. So, <laughs> well, hopefully, if he makes an appearance, we will definitely acknowledge his presence. It, yes, uh, yes, they're <laughs> both kind of r- running around in my room right now. So, if you hear scampering, it's just cats. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, no worries. Well, Emma Five, you had a a very interesting year, uh, 2017, and the 2017 Schmodown season, a a fantastic year, and you capped it off 
with an excellent spectacular. But hey, this is the first time Frank and I got to have you on the show. I know you've been on the show before. I want to take it back just for a moment for maybe new listeners and for Frank and I's sure. education. So how did you get involved initially with the movie <laughs> Trivia Schmodown? Who made the overture to say, hey, we need a post-game interviewer. We need somebody with you know a big personality to talk to these guys after the matches and yeah. these after the matches. Who made the overture? How did you get started? I mean, it was definitely Christian's decision. Uh, what happened was around LA Comic Con of 2016, so that would have been Halloween weekend, about a week before that, I got a message from Christian asking me to come into Collider sometime. Uh, I had worked with Ken Knapsack uh, on some stuff over at Screen Junkies, and I'd also been on his Star Wars podcast a number of times, and they basically were trying to expand the roster of women talent who they had at Collider and Schmoes in general. And so Christian wanted me to come in and potentially, you know, try out some stuff for, uh, for Schmoes. And, and, you know, I ultimately ended up being on TV talk at Collider, but it really was as quick as I got a message from Christian saying, Hey, we tape the Schmo down on Fridays. Uh, we're not doing one this Friday because of LA Comic Con. Would you want to come in? The following Friday, you can watch a taping of the Schmodown. We kind of have an open door policy, and then we can get lunch or something and talk about how we can get you involved here at the channel. So I said, oh, yeah, of course, that sounds awesome. I knew sort of who a bunch of those guys were. I remembered Schmoes from when they used to share a space with AfterBuzz, which is how I kind of got connected into the online media scene in the first place. And uh, then I ran into... Ken walking around with Christian during LA Comic Con. We chatted for a while. So this was before I was scheduled to actually go in for this meeting I was supposed to have. And I hung out with those guys, went to a couple of their panels and got a text from Ken on Monday saying, hey, Mark and Christian want to know if you want to co-host Schmoes on Thursday. So I agreed to do that. And the next, and so after we did the show show. I chatted with Christian. He's like, yeah, you're great. I want to get you on our regular host rotation for schmoes and, you know, eventually introduce you to more at the people, uh, more of the people at Collider and get you on more stuff here. Meanwhile, Josh McCuga has already gotten my email address and asked me to do TV talk the following Monday. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then I asked him, cause this is Thursday night. Cause you, you know, back in the day we used to do shows on Thursday and I, and I said to him, okay, well, do you want me to, still come in on Friday. And he's like, yeah, I mean, you totally can if you want. We got the Schmodown going on. It's pretty fun. And I told him, sure, yeah, I'd love to come in and, and see what the Schmodown is all about. That morning, I started watching some Schmodown matches. I knew what it was because I went to the panel at LA Comic Con and thought, mm. wow, this seems really fun. Uh, and then I got a text from Ken on Friday saying, hey, uh, and this is the Friday that I wasn't even necessarily going to go in. Uh, you know, I didn't have to go in. Christian had said it wasn't a big deal. I could go if I wanted to. And uh, I got a text from Ken saying, oh, did Christian talk to you about doing post-match interviews today? <laughs> and that was the story of how I got started in the showdown. And I believe that the first post-match interview I ever did was maybe Bibiani versus Andrako. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was. I, that's about the time that I started. That was certainly within the first or second day of me going in and doing post match interviews for Schmodown. I, I believe that uh, Wolves of Steel had a match that day, and I already know knew who they were because I'd been watching again some of the the backlog of the Schmodown videos. So yeah, that's that's how it started, and I just. They liked me and kept asking me to do more, and I just stuck around. <laughs> <laughs> well, was that something, though? Okay, so you say you start off on After Buzz and kind of – Yeah. That's how you kind of got into stuff. A lot of people come from After Buzz. seems to be a Yeah, a it's very true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, the sort of uh, initial intention behind After Buzz was that, you know, Maria Menounos came from a place of, okay, when I was getting started out as somebody that, that wanted to be an on-camera on host, that wanted to be a broadcaster, I – had a difficult time getting jobs because it's really difficult to get a job if you don't have a reel, if you don't have any body of work to present. But you're not going to have a body of work to present or a reel if you've never been if you've never been booked on a job. So the idea was that she wanted to provide a space for hosts that were getting started, that were passionate about 
TV shows and, you know, just sort of the media world in general to have the opportunity to come in and to get experience and make connections and get footage for a reel. And so that's why there are a lot of people that kind of come out of the, the after buzz scene, if you will. Yeah, no, I mean, like, yeah, it's an awesome place. So, okay, so you wanted to be a, an on-camera host. You wanted to be yes. on air host. Well, who were some of your, uh, you know, broadcasting influences? Like, for me, I love Johnny Carson, David Letterman. Those sure. are my guys. For you, who, yeah. who are some of the people you like? I mean, when I was growing up, uh, I always knew that I wanted to major in musical theater uh because i you know i grew up in connecticut and i loved going to broadway shows and i was a singer and dancer and whatnot and so i always kind of thought that that was going to be the path that i went down and then i remember when i was probably middle school maybe early high school uh the show first of all i was obsessed with this british show called changing rooms uh, which would then become the, the American ripoff of it on TLC was called Trading Spaces. And I was obsessed with Carol Smiley, who was the host of Changing Rooms, the British host. And then Trading Spaces started and Paige Davis was their host. And my mom was telling me that Paige Davis' background was in musical theater. And so I thought to myself, well, I feel like I could do that and that would be a really fun job. So that was kind of what piqued my interest in hosting uh, in general. Uh, I remember, you know, being a kid watching, a, I, I was sort of the heyday of the, the 90s MTV kids. So watching like, you know, TRL and I, I remember seeing like Carson Daly and Jenny McCarthy. And I really loved uh, freaking Singled Out, which was like, oh, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but. Also, then when I was um, and growing up, I used to watch uh, like Rosie O'Donnell, uh, like I loved her show in its early incarnation. And I just kind of always gravitated towards the like, I want to host a show where there's where you're like doing something or something more along the, the talk show line of things. And I also really when I was on tour right after I graduated from college, got really obsessed with Chelsea lately. Like I loved Chelsea Handler. <laughs> Um, cause I just, I liked that she was a woman that just wasn't afraid to cuss and be not like sweet and likable. So that was, she was definitely somebody that I really enjoyed as a host. And then, uh, now as an adult, my like absolute idol is Graham Norton. Uh, my yeah. dream is to have like a Graham Norton style talk show where you're just like drinking and instead of really talking about the projects that people are working on, you're just telling weird stories and looking at slash fan art <laughs> <laughs> so okay so when you start doing the the interviews but you said earlier that day you're looking through you know the feed and watching some of the videos yeah, was, yeah. was it was was it something that kind of grabbed you instantly like for me i i come from like pro wrestling like that's what i work in sure. that's what i grew up on and then i find this this thing on the internet and i'm like wow this yeah. is you know i've always been a big game show fan and sure. and, and, oh and then my gosh, and then absolutely. i like wrestling and this is like the perfect mold between the two so i was i was in i was invested yeah. from the first couple of videos was that kind of same for you did you just see it and you're like okay yeah i, I like where this is going yeah, it, it was very clear to me that this show was making an effort to be more than people show up and answer trivia questions about movies that there was this sort of pomp and circumstance to it and they were working on developing these storylines. I, again, I grew up in Connecticut. So um, some of my, one of my parents, very good friends actually worked for WWF, now WWE. So that was always something that I was very aware of. And I, and I was like fascinated by the fact that wrestling was fake. You know what I mean? Because like Absolutely. so many kids in my school were obsessed with wrestling. Chor we'll yeah, choreographed. choreographed. That's a, that, is a, that is a much better way to put it. <laughs> But, but yeah, the fact that, but, but the thing is like, even though it is choreographed, it doesn't matter. You're still so invested in it. And the thing that's really fun about being involved in the Schmodown is the fact that the movie trivia is a hundred percent real. Like that you cannot plan who is going to win or lose a match or what you're going to spin on the wheel or what comes up during the taping. And so it's really fun then as the post game interviewer, because not only are you contributing to, you know, uh, keeping the storylines going, but you also have to do a lot of improvisation because you don't know how it's going to go. And, but that's like 
fun and exciting. Yeah, no, I. That's the thing also about like pro wrestling, and that's why I told Christian before. I'm like, okay, with pro wrestling, we sit down in a room, we write the show, we know who's going to win, we know who's going to lose, right. we know where the story's going. Christian sure. and, the, and the people and the writers have this idea of, oh, we, we want to push this guy, or we want this person to be the next thing, or we want this to be the story, and then they totally. lose or something happens, and then it's all it's all down the drain. Frank, you yeah. got something for Emma? Yeah, in regards to the storylines, Emma, you got pretty involved with uh, combating the lines then throughout this past season. <laughs> I did, I know. Uh, just... You, you, you <laughs> got in some, some uh, tussles with the lines, and how did... Where do you think that really all started and what does it stem from? I know they say that you know, you're know you biased, but do you really think that's really uh, the genesis of your feud with the Lion's Den? I mean, I think that the genesis of my feud with the Lion's Den is the fact that, you know, all of those guys are just, they, they do the heel character so, so well. And you just really love to hate them. I love to hate them. But I also saw that, you know, you had these heel characters that were kind of walking all over everybody. And, and sort of the genesis of my feud with them was the fact that I was somebody that just didn't want to put up with their bullshit. Uh, and so I I stood up to them. And that's kind of how it got started. I mean, you also have such a, a such a, a great character in Finstock from the point of view that he's just so weird and kind of gross, but also <laughs> like, but also never crosses the line into being inappropriate or condemning somebody's character. He condemns people's actions, and and one of the things that that Tom is always very adamant about is he never wants to approach, particularly me or any of sort of the face characters, from the point of view of, oh, I hate that person. It's no. I don't like that that person is such a goody two shoes. So it, there's right. there's a lot of uh, very careful crafting that goes into it, so that we keep it fun, honestly. So now with you have Diego, you know, uh, Finstock, you have yeah. JTE Snyder, and then they bring in Grace, and you and Grace. <laughs> uh, it's so I mean, funny because Grace is like anybody that like pays attention to anything we say on social media knows that we're like obsessed with each other. <laughs> <laughs> right. So well, how fun was that to kind of play these characters with uh, each other and oh, kind of have this, you know, mean great. girl spirit? Oh, totally. I mean, because because Grace is uh, Grace is such a wonderful actress. So it's really fun to have a, a sort of nemesis in her from the point of view that, you know, I, I like the idea. And it's something that's really kind of come about, particularly in this last year, that no one who is involved in the schmodown is just there because we need somebody to do this thing. Like, I love that we're able to develop a storyline amongst the people who are doing the post-game interviews by bringing in managers and factions. It's, it's not just the people who are the competitors themselves. Uh, well, speaking of... Yeah. yeah, speaking of managers and factions, you yourself have now become a manager in the Schmodown. Uh, how did how did that idea come about? Was it something that you approached Christian or Christian approached you? Or was it kind of a mutual thing? I mean, Christian approached me about it. Uh, basically, what happened was I got included on a group text with Ricky and uh, Tom and uh, Jay Washington and Roxy and Christian sent us all this group text saying, Hey, uh, during the spectacular, I have this idea for the manager's bowl. I want to have a, a, a five way manager bowl. It's going to be crazy. And I was like, in my, and mind you at this point, he had forgotten that he had not actually asked me to be a manager yet. <laughs> that I, don't like know if it was, I don't know if it was a forgot or like he thought he already talked to me. I, I don't know. Uh, but I got this text and I, I love the like, multiplayer events like i love fatal five ways four ways whatever you want to mm -hmm. have and so i think i was the first person to respond and i was like i'm in and meanwhile i'm like who am i what i'm not managing anybody uh, <laughs> and then C christian and i talked uh and he said oh you know how do you feel about becoming a manager and obviously this doesn't mean that you're gonna stop doing post-game interviews but like i'd love to get you involved in the storyline in another way 
And I said, cool, yeah, that sounds great. And he asked me, well, who do you think I'm going to have you manage? And I was like, I I don't know, maybe Rachel? Uh, and he was like, Mark Andreco. And I was, and I decided that that was great. I love Mark Andreco. And, and it was so important, I think, for Andreco, who, you know, in his real life is, is very much such a champion for, right. you know, positivity and equal rights and the LGBTQ community and women. Mm-hmm. It, it was really important for him to have that redemption storyline. And I was very glad to get to be a part of it. And I think also when you look at Andreco and how he fit into the lion's end from the beginning, at least in my eyes, it didn't really make too much sense. He kind of made totally. his way in there a little bit, totally. but then he kind of would veer back, especially when, uh, Bullfield's cat took on just Rachel I know, uh, and yeah. their attitude towards that. So it was, I kind of was hoping it was going to happen. I'm glad it, uh, he joined your faction. Cause then you also picked up Sam Whitwer. How, okay. how much involvement do you think he might have? Cause he's just a star Wars guy. And he's I on my what, fantasy what, team, by the way, I'm throwing that one out there. <laughs> Sam oh, Whitwer. Nice. Well, what am I? okay. So Sam and I talked and he's, he is dying for us to have a star Trek, all star Trek questions. Okay. Schmodown. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that he's always going to be more of the niche matches, but I think that also we are going to get more of those as we move forward with the Schmodown and, and kind of keep expanding on this fun thing that we're all sort of working on creating together. Uh, Sam Whitworth joining my faction was my idea, by the way. Uh, nice. <laughs> basically what Very well played. Was, thank you. Thank you. Uh, basically, what happened was we had that big star Wars match. Uh, we had already, we'd, we'd taped the Ken going bad reveal. Uh, and I knew that he was going to continue to, you know, there was going to be a moment of, Oh no, he's redeemed. Rachel got through to him because she's so great. And then he was going to go like full heel. Uh, and so I said, well, you know, I've got this like feud going on with grace. I know grace is going to walk Ken out. Um, I was like, what if, uh, and obviously like we'd run it by Sam. What if like I, because now I'm like staging this whole thing against the lion's den. What if like I brought him out for the Iron Man match? And Christian's like, I don't know about that. He's like, unless Sam wants to join your team, then in which case I love that idea. And so Mm -hmm. I talked to Sam about it and, uh, we kind of ended up changing what we did where Christian was like, oh, you know, if he wins the match, then you and Andreco can come and, and basically recruit him on camera. Uh, and uh, yeah. And so then I chatted with Sam about it. He's like, Oh, he's like, he's like, okay, well let me just ask Christian about it. Uh, and then they came back and they're like, yeah, that's what we'll do. If Sam wins the match, he's, he can totally join your faction. So, well, you know, you bring now, up, that, you bring, oh, I don't mean to cut you off there, Frank, but you bring up that Ironman match. I wanted to ask you real quick because we put out yeah. a tweet on uh, our Twitter at Schmodown RD the other day asking what was the greatest Schmodown match of all time. The majority Ooh. of people said the Ironman match between Whitworth and Knapsack. You were there, you were in the room as everything was, was going down. What was, what was the energy like in the building oh. in those closing seconds? It was insane. I, uh, Everyone was just so on edge, especially because, you know, Sam had had such a lead in that match for a good chunk of it. I mean, Mm -hmm. in the beginning, they were going head to head and then Sam managed to get a little bit of a lead. But then once they got into those speed rounds, Ken was just on fire. Uh, It was it was so intense. Everyone was on the edge of their seat. I didn't even sit down for the whole match. I was just kind of pacing. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, it was the, the energy in the room was very uh, i think it was i don't want to say tense but i can't quite think of the right word to describe it it was definitely not people just like sitting back with popcorn enjoying a match <laughs> like i don't think anybody breathed for the last 30 seconds of that match <laughs> it was probably like me during the uh, game seven of the world series this year i had to walk out of the room <laughs> for every pitch i couldn't do it frank what were you gonna say <laughs> yeah um i just wanted to know if if you have other ideas for uh, players in your faction. I, I know you mentioned Rachel off the top. I'm not expecting you to reveal uh, who's Certainly. in your faction, but yeah. uh, uh, oh, do you think it's something to be extremely excited about uh, going forward in the season, the fans? Oh, sake? yeah. No, I, I, I'm looking forward to uh, growing this faction. The thing that's really great is that I have uh, – I have – 
something that's very desirable to many of the very serious competitors who maybe haven't quite been given the due deference, uh, shall we say, that they deserve from the point of view that because I did win the manager's bowl, I get to give somebody in my faction a number one contender spot automatically. And so, you know, that's that's good. That's good ammunition to convince sure. people to join my team because I can go up to them and say, hey, uh, I know that, you know, you've been kind of getting the short end of the stick in the schmodown. How about a number one contender seat? So mm, interesting. There's that. That is a very enticing. Uh, it is. It is. Weapon, I'm very, if you will. very excited to have that. So. <laughs> Have you uh, have you come up with a faction name? Because we have to have a faction name. Everyone. I know. I I have not come up with a, a I, faction name I, yet. I do have uh, uh, an option for you. Okay. The Foo, yes, Fight, the Foo Fighters are my favorite band, and okay. I was thinking the Five Fighters. The Five Fighters. So, I like that. Yeah, I've gotten so. a lot of uh, suggestions. Obviously, Fight for Life. Uh, thank you, Scott. Oh Vance. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure you guys will come up with something much better than the Fife Fighters. It was just, you know. Listen, I, I feel like there might be some alliteration involved. Uh, I think somebody uh, suggested maybe Fife Club, like Fight Club, but Fife Club. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's not bad. So, I kind of like that Yeah, one. that's not bad. No, I kind of like Fife Club. Uh, <laughs> so we will we will see. It is it is still being workshopped, but well, should not, be. But not only are you a, a manager – now, uh, yes. who, who holds that coveted number one contendership for one of your clients? You, not only were yes. you the post game interview, you did compete in the 2017 Schmodown. I wanted to ask you a couple things. Any chance yeah. of us seeing the Night Sisters back in action? You know, I, I think that the answer is yes. Maybe somewhere down the line. Um, I don't. I don't know, man. It, it was. It was one of those things where I think we were trying to bring in some more teams and just kind of see what worked, what didn't work. Uh, what I have been saying that I would love to do is it would be fun, especially as sort of the inner geekdom league continues to grow. I think it would be fun to have a team league within inner geekdom. And I think if that happened, then Joel and I would definitely, definitely be back to compete in something like that. Oh, a team. To, now that's something I hadn't thought about. That would be pretty yeah. interesting. That would be interesting. Now, a lot of people who watch the, sh the spectacular Schmodown spectacular yes. too, a lot of people online said you walked away with it. You were the overall <laughs> winner. You were the MVP, if you will, Thank of you. the spectacular. Yeah. Do you agree with that sentiment? I, listen, <laughs> I felt pretty damn good. Uh, Cause again, did you think you were going to win that match? Did you think like I, going into? I thought I had a very good chance. Okay, who did you see as your biggest competition? Was it? Did you see it coming down to you and Dagnino? I could not have listen. I could not have imagined that, and I we could not have scripted that. <laughs> it just happened, and I would not have had it any other way. Uh, I really did think that that Dagnino was probably going to be. My biggest competition. No offense to Jay Washington. Uh, oh, he's taking offense. <laughs> I, I'm sure he is he somewhere is. taking offense, and that's my guy. Oh yeah. He, like he's not. He hasn't even listened to this podcast yet, and he's already like screaming, oh, yeah. throwing things somewhere. Uh, <laughs> no, but I. Uh, and, and it was funny when when this match was being set up, and uh, and we were kind of discussing the logistics of it. I said, well, ultimately. It doesn't matter who wins, just as long as it's not Dagnino. <laughs> and True. so when when Jay got knocked out, I at first, I mean I adore Ricky, but oh man, he is objectively the worst player in the entire Schmodown. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but he's great. Uh, he's but he's such a he's a great personality. People like to show up and hear him just ramble about stuff. Um, but I I did have this moment where my heart kind of sank when Jay got knocked out, and I was like, well. It's all up to me now. I got to do it. I got to win. <laughs> <laughs> got to. So in a way, in a way, I saw Jay as a little bit of a teammate during that match. I think is more why I wasn't so much worried about him being my biggest competition. It really was all about taking down Nagino. So it was more like a two and a half against one. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two, <laughs> two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Sure. <laughs> two and three hits. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, it was an entertaining match. I thought it was a great way to start off the spectacular, too. It really set the tone. Now, you talk yeah. about inner geekdom. I want to ask you this. I am I, I haven't officially started petitioning for it, 
but I will if it gets down to that. I think, you know, with the Inner Geekdom League growing, more categories need to be created for the Inner Geekdom League. Uh, yeah, League. I would love that. I'm, I'm suggesting a Back to the Future category. I think that was apropos. Now, it might not yes, be good for John yep, Rocha, but he doesn't compete in that league. Yeah, so he'll yeah, be okay. We, yeah, I was like, we tried, we had Back to the Future in like one Inner Geekdom yeah. match. The one that I that I thought was a fit, but apparently was a very unpopular opinion, was James Bond. Thank I know you a lot for about bringing James that up. Bond movies. Thank you for bringing that up. So <laughs> what, oh, James boy. Bond is an inner. That's an inner geekdom league, inner geekdom division category. I think it is. I totally agree. I what? totally agree. I don't understand the argument against me. it. I I don't really either. I, and this is the thing: is is it's something that uh, Robert Meyer Burnett and I were talking about because he's also a really big James Bond fan, and we're like. No, it was like I, I, on the surface level. Sure, you look at it, and James Bond seems cool. But the people that are really into Bond, it's that same kind of obsession that like Star Wars fans have. Frankly, yeah, absolutely, I, I think it totally belongs in Ergetum. But absolutely, apparently, people do not share my opinion. Well, you know what, Emma Fife? Now you've become more of my favorite person that I've ever <laughs> talked to. A little bit more. Let me ask you this: so, just for just for my own. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, thing, uh, about James Bond. Okay. Yes. I love James Bond. I've watched all of yep. them multiple times. For you, first yes. off, best best Bond film, and then do you mind telling me who plays James Bond the best in your opinion? Yeah, oh, not at all. I mean, so, okay. Hmm. I, I don't know that it is the best James Bond film, but I think it is a really good film to bring people in to the sort of James Bond franchise. And a lot of it is because that's what really hooked me and made me go, I want to go back and see all of the other James Bond films. And it's Goldeneye. I freaking love mm. Goldeneye. Um, I, mm. I think that it's, you know, Pierce Brosnan is not my favorite Bond. Um, I, I mean, it's hard for me to say because I have such a, a weird connection because my dad is Scottish to Sean Connery because he is Scottish. Absolutely. Uh, and I, yes. and I do really, you know, I, I love um, like from Russia with love and I love Goldfinger. Uh, so I would, I would say that, you know, Sean Connery is my favorite bond. Uh, but if I was going to have people jump in and start watching James Bond, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going that far back. Cause there is some stuff in that now that's pretty antiquated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you need to kind of already be on board with what James Bond is before you go back and try to consume some of that stuff that has some, you know, outdated attitudes. Doesn't age well, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so you're, you're saying, though, Goldeneye and Sean Connery, those are your picks. I like them. I can't yeah, those be are, mad at them. Yeah, those are my picks. I can't be mad at them. Pierce Brosnan think, yeah. always kind of looked to me like... He always looked like James Bond. Yeah. Like out of everybody. No, he, yeah, he's a good Bond. And I, I think that Timothy Dalton is so underrated and wasn't given the opportunity to be as good as he should have been. I'm one of the weird people who kind of like George Lazenby. I like okay, his one movie. That, yep. And I don't know if you saw the Hulu uh, special they did on him, but it was very interesting to see how he uh, got that role. Oh, it, about George Lazenby? I yes. saw in the uh, in the documentary that was on Netflix, uh, Everything or Nothing. Yes. There was okay. a whole big section on George Lazenby in there, and it was it was fascinating. Yeah. I mean, he essentially just got his hair cut where Sean Connery yeah. went, got the same suit, yes. and then walked in. I mean, that's... Yeah, he basically was like, I'm kind of good looking. I want to be James Bond. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. So what fantastic. do you say, fellas? What do you I, say? I'm imagining finger guns as that's as he's asking that. Oh, for sure. Yes, he comes in <laughs> yeah. with the fingers. Yeah, I like it. Frank, yeah. uh, <laughs> anything else you want to add here? <laughs> well, as uh, the new season approaches, we're getting the Schmodown Awards. Oh, yes. Uh, Emma Five, who is Player of the Year? Hmm. You know, Player of the Year. I think you can make a strong art. My, I have kind of two picks potentially for Player of the Year. Uh, one, of course, is Sam Levine because. Right. Listen, Sam Levine works so hard to do as well as he does in the Schmodown, which isn't to say that he, I mean, Sam is a super smart guy and he knows a lot about movies, but he really, really works hard to, you know, excel in this game. And his, 
dedication is really admirable and obviously totally paid off. I mean, he has the belt mm-hmm. right now. Uh, but then, of course, I mean, you can't overlook Rachel Cushing, man. Like, she oh, just sure. came freaking out of the gate as this incredible player this year. She almost won in a two-on-one match against Blofeld's cat, and she consistently performs so strong in in both sort of the, the regular schmodown, if you will, and in the inner geekdom. And I just think, uh, uh, you know, if anybody has been just it, is the absolute definition of perseverance and has really grown into being a, a fan favorite competitor, I, I got to go Rachel Cushing. And I've heard other people talk about this, but how difficult was this bail? Did it surprise you how difficult it was to make some of these choices for some of these categories? Oh yeah, no, you know, it, 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 it does and doesn't. Um, it does surprise me from the point of view that you would think you would have these very clear favorites, but I think right. that the people who were nominated, if you look back at their body of work in the Schmodown throughout the year, you understand why they were given these nominations and, and it is really difficult to make a definitive choice because you can make an argument for pretty much anybody. And you are nominated yourself as, as well. I am. Manager of the year. Yes. How, how are you feeling yes. about your chances? Uh, you know, I, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I, I think that if I do win, it's because there's a lot of, uh, like, anti dagnino people out there. <laughs> uh, uh, so mostly I think that would be how I got the votes. But I also just threw my hat in the manager ring. So I don't necessarily think that I'm going to win that one. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Well, we'll see what happens. 2018's it's it's got all the makings of a classic Schmodown season. Uh, yeah. The Fife Club it, it might be in full effect. <laughs> they might have all the titles. So my all the belts. You already have the Star Wars Championship. Working exactly. all the other ones. Uh, Trying and, to just get belts <laughs> all over the place. Get them all over the place. <laughs> Wear more belts than Tommy Wiseau. Um, Emma oh Fife, man! <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to? Anything you need to plug on your way out of here? Sure. I mean, you know, keep watching the movie Trivia Schmodown. It's something that we put a lot of uh, thought and effort into, and it's the storytelling aspects of the Schmodown that make it really special and fun, I think, for people to be involved in. So 2018 is going to be a, a great time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm on the internet doing all kinds of things. I, I work for a really great Twitch channel uh, called Hyper RPG. If you're not familiar with what Twitch is. It's just another streaming platform, kind of like YouTube, except from the point of view that on Twitch, if you want to watch a show and you know the name of the channel it's on and the time that it's on, you just go to twitch.tv slash the name of that channel and there it is instead of having to generate a new live link every single time you want to stream live. So in terms of live streaming, uh, Twitch is really a better platform than YouTube, in my opinion. Uh, but I do a couple shows for them. Um, I am part of a Star Wars RPG. It is called Pencils and Parsecs. We stream live at 8 o'clock p.m. every Wednesday night, uh, Pacific Thanks, time. Man. And it's really great. Uh, we're in our second season right now. What most people do is they've been, because we've recently had a bunch of people uh, discover it and are they're going back and most of them are kind of like starting with the beginning of season two all the old episodes are on hyper rpgs youtube uh, if you want to get caught up on that and watch live it's real fun uh but yeah it's a, it's a great cast um uh joe star who is over at screen junkies is one of the other cast members uh hector navarro is in it as well uh, he's great yeah hector's phenomenal and then um also, uh, Kim Cannon, she was the very first uh, Jedi Master who was a lady ever at Disneyland. And uh, Keith Silverstein, who is the voice of Torbjorn in Overwatch. Uh, and then we have a great uh, GM, uh, Bert Jennings. He's the narrative director for Turn Me Up Games. So he's just a really, really good storyteller. And it's just a fantastic time. Uh, yeah, Roka has been a guest star on the show before. And we have a lot of fun. So. Well, it's like kind of the best part of my week other than <laughs> Shmoda. That and Shmoda to me are, are like two things that I feel so invested in because, I, you know, as somebody that is primarily doing sort of entertainment reporting, it's so cool to work on stuff that is story driven and is, is kind of evergreen content. You know, it, it's stuff that you can mm-hmm. watch it whenever and, you know, it doesn't become irrelevant a day later because it's old news. So 
that's my plug. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, support Emma Fife. We support Emma Fife here on the Schmodown Rundown. Follow her on all platforms at Emma Fife on Twitter, of course. Emma, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Welcome back to the Schmodown Rundown. Another special guest joins us right now on the show. He is the interim commissioner of the Schmodown, Mr. Thad Williams. Thad, how you doing, man? Hey, guys. Good. Great to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. You know, you're... um. I think you're quite the uh, polarizing figure in the movie trivia <laughs> showdown recently, and we're going to get into that. A lot to talk to you about. But my first thing is this. You know, I'm new to the movie trivia showdown. You know, I've, I've only been on, I think, for about a year now. I've been watching and, and really getting invested into it. So I'm still learning about everybody, and Frank's filling me in where he can. But um, I want to know, how did, you, how did you initially get started working in the showdown? Sure. Uh, well, you know, I started working at Collider uh, towards the beginning of 2016, and I was working freelance for them on, on a particular show, and that show happened to uh, – the delivery for that show was on Friday afternoons. So Friday, while I was trying to finish my editing, uh, all of a sudden 45 people would show up and make a lot of commotion and I couldn't get my work done. And so eventually, <laughs> eventually I uh, poked my head in the studio uh, while something was rendering and to, to kind of take a look and see what was going on in there and what all these people were doing hanging out in the middle of the middle of the day. And sure enough, they were taping the schmodown. So uh, eventually, as the year went on, I started hanging out a little bit on Friday afternoons, watched some of the games, saw how things were going. Uh, threw in my two cents here and there on the production side uh, to kind of help give them some some ideas about how to how to make the production a little bit more uh, streamlined and uh, and then went full time with the company uh, late last year or I guess late 2016 because uh, we're now in 2018. So uh, so ever since then, uh, Christian and I started uh, talking a lot about the production of the show and the 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 workflow of it and the the ideas that he has as we all know he's got a ton of ideas and he's always thinking of something new to do with it do with the show and and I was kind of he was kind of bouncing bouncing ideas off of me he threw me in the ring eventually uh <laughs> with my in the team's league with uh, the editor of the show Aaron Willem and uh you know we uh, we kept working and working, and eventually uh, eventually he came to me and uh, and asked if I would fill in for him when he uh, had to go on paternity leave, and that's kind of where we are now. Wow. Okay. So you, you kind of you get you, you summed it up for us right there. Um. Okay. So you started working kind of behind the scenes, and then what did you think? Okay. For me. I, I came into the showdown. I was a wrestling fan. You know, I am a wrestling fan. I work sure. in wrestling and, and I found this video on YouTube and I'm like, oh wow, like I'm a fan of movies. I'm a fan of wrestling. This kind of melds the two together real well. Uh, it has storylines and, and promos and the entrances. What what do you think it is that makes the showdown uh st what what do you think it is that makes it so special? Because it has hundreds of thousands of people who watch this thing every single week and who listen to these shows and, and, and support all the characters on the show. What do you think it is about it, in your opinion, that that's so magnetic to fans? Well, I think what makes the show so unique and interesting and, and why we, the fan base has grown so much in such a short period is th that it's really the two camps of, of fans kind of coming together. You've got people that are diehard wrestling fans that are always looking for something else that has that kind of wrestling vibe to it with the characters and the storylines and all that sort of thing. And then you've also got trivia fans and game show fans and movie nerds that are clamoring for a kind of movie trivia game show. And so to meld those two together, I think is really the genius of the, of the show itself is you've you you've got a little bit of something for everybody. So the fans that are really into inane movie trivia and 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 minute details and castings and all that sort of thing, they've got all of that there. And then the people that are really looking for uh, big, large personalities, kind of 
uh, battling one another and creating this 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 rivalry. Uh, they have that too, and and before you know it, everyone kind of blends into one another. And the people that came came to it for the trivia stick around for the the characters, and the people that came to it for the wrestling storylines stick around for the great movie knowledge. So I think it's really a really unique property, and it's it's created a whole new set of fans. Uh, that maybe didn't know what wrestling was before and a whole set of wrestling fans that maybe didn't really understand movie trivia. Uh, They've brought them all together. You know, I think that's a perfect analysis of what makes the showdown so special. That was uh, props to you, Thad. Props to you on that. That that, that was great. (laughs) Hey, Frank, you got something for that? Yeah. So I want to get into your commissionership, which I guess some might say is in dispute at the moment. (laughs) Okay. Sure. Sure. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, some would some would say that would, they, would they can say, say they can say that. They That's can, fine. They can, they, say that. They, they can say that. But before we get into that, when you were tapped uh, to fill in as interim commissioner, were, were you were you shocked? Were you like, yeah, uh, this seems like a right fit? Did you think somebody else was going to get it? What was what was just going through your Cause, mind? Because I will say, was, Frank, not to cut you off, I will say yeah, I don't no, think no, anybody fine. saw you coming as the commissioner. There were so many fan I theories out there. I guarantee you no one saw it coming. My, most of <laughs> primarily me. Uh, yeah. We, after, after we did it before, be, after we made the decision and before we made the public announcement, uh, we kind of toyed with people and Christian, Christian kept uh, posting polls on the, on the, on Twitter and in the <laughs> Facebook group just to see if anyone, anyone out there had uh, me as their pick. And I'm pretty sure no one did. Uh, I, I I don't think anyone th- saw that coming. I had only been in a couple matches. Um, public uh, the public face was not really there in the league, so it was definitely a shock. Uh, I think it was a really it was a strong calculated move on Christian's part because he knew that he needed to have someone come in that knew not just the 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 outward. Uh, facing part of the league, but also the ins and outs on how the show gets made on a on a twice a week basis. Uh, is that bi-weekly? Is that is twice a week bi-weekly or is bi-weekly every other week? I think bi-weekly I every other week. Twice. Right? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. twice yeah. week yeah. on a twice <laughs> weekly basis. Uh, so, so he knew that he knew that there was a, a lot of moving parts and that he, if he wasn't going to be around for every single piece, uh, he knew he needed someone that he could trust to make sure that all of that worked. So when you look at when you, when you look at people's assumptions uh, there uh, for the the top possible contenders to take over, and you see the Dagninos and the Knapsocks and 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 the big characters in the show, and it, without the throughout the league, I think you're you're forgetting that it's not a figurehead position. There's a lot of work involved behind the scenes. And I think what I've tried to to do is highlight that work that goes into the commissionership. Cause I think to some people they might, they might see some of the things that I've been doing behind the scenes and it looks new to them. It's not new. It's just, we hadn't filmed Christian doing all of that stuff. Christian has been going through that since the beginning of the league. He has to do that day in and day out. And so uh, I think what I've been able to do is kind of open that window a little bit and let people in, uh, look, see behind the curtain a little and see all of the, the craziness that goes on just to get a matchup. Well, th- that's okay, what, so go ahead, Frank. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I also want to get into the, the, the original terms of this uh, contract yes. of the length of commissionership. It seemed like it was only until – Christian lost the belt and he would then revert back to being a commissioner. But all of a sudden we find out there's about, what, what was it, a six-month contract? Uh, not, so what takes precedence here? The the month, the length, uh, the monthly length of the commissionership or the fact that Christian lost the belt? Shouldn't he go back to being commissioner? I think some people out there are a little confused about how uh, this weaseled its way, if you will, into the contract. Sure. I mean, I, I the, way, the way the contract was written was that it was – uh, I, the terms of me joining wa- would be while Christian was out and while he was while he was champion or six months, whichever came first. And so or excuse me, whichever came last. So, oh, okay. yeah, see, see, there's the there's, <laughs> there's the trick. It, 
<laughs> if you if, if if you read it the wrong way or you recite it the wrong way, like I just did, then you could be in trouble. That's why we have to write things down, and that's why these contracts are very important. Because Christian and I are running around all the time. We don't remember what we say off the cuff, uh, off the cuff. But this way, there's actually a written a written word right there, and so he was able to sign this contract. And what this contract means is, uh, I have six months of play time uh, of of gameplay. Uh, six months when the league is active to to really work on uh, forming the league the uh, the way that I want the, the way that I think is the best the best way to go as the commissioner uh, figuring out what the matches are figuring out uh, who 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 should be playing whom at a given time and it, it's not really something that you can if you start that process it really takes six months or more to really get in there and figure out where everything needs to go. If you're only doing it for one or two months, it really, you, you can set up a few things and they could go the other way with the outcomes of the games. And then that entire, that entire arc is really kind of shot. So you really need that six month period to, uh, to, to really, to really hone in and figure out where you want to see the league and I think that when when the six months is up, I think you'll be able to you can really s- step back and take a look and see that there was a there, there was a plan in motion for who should be getting what matches, who uh, where where the league should be headed, both in not just in the singles league, but the team league and the inner geekdom division and the Star Wars division. There's so many different moving parts within within the entire league as a whole that you you really need a little bit of time to sink your teeth into it so would it be safe to say then that you you are really concerned about making your mark in the league as opposed to just being a placeholder for a christian yeah i mean i i i'd like to i'd like to see it as not just keeping the seat warm but also mm-hmm. being able to bring something to the table. I think if I if, just keeping the seat warm would really just be, uh, you know, it, 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 that's a fine, that's a fine approach. But I think that there's a, there's a better way to kind of put your stamp on things and, 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 and I'll not completely change the league. Cause the league is set up the way that it is mm-hmm. for a reason, but to, to kind of let show that, let it grow, allow things to happen and also take some, take some pressure off of Christian. Now, as, as the fans all know, Christian, uh, been announcing matches and, and, and new players and all this stuff, uh, on social media in the last month or so. And he is very much involved with the day-to-day operations. It's not, it's not a scenario where I'm locking the door behind my, behind me and he's not welcome to any of these things. No, we're working together because I know that at the end of the day, he is the biggest cheerleader of the league as a whole. He's been there since day one. It was it's his baby, and there's no better person to be the 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 spokesman for the league. So there's there's never a situation where he's locked out of the proceedings or he doesn't have a say in it. It's just I'm taking the pressure off so that he can focus more on the. Uh, the 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 public facing stuff the 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 marketing the mm-hmm. the the branding of the show the 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 spokesman kind of work and then I can handle a lot of the day to day stuff it's 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 like a lot of front offices for uh for for national national sports teams I mean you need you need coaches you need GMs you need owners there's there's structures in place so that it doesn't all fall onto one person's shoulders. So I'm happy to help alleviate some of that stress. Now, you, okay, so you talk about some of these new things that you've implemented. Or people think that they're new, but Christian's been doing them behind the scenes the whole time. This is what I wanted to ask you, because sure. the character, we shall say, that you play on the Schmodown is fantastic. And my question <laughs> is just, so you were working behind the scenes. Did you ever have any want to be an on-screen performer? Uh you know, I, I mean, I've, I've dabbled here and there. Uh, I haven't, uh, I, 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 I learned many, many moons ago that there are far more, uh, capable people 
uh, to to <laughs> to do the more on camera stuff. Uh, I I found my calling behind the scenes, uh, behind the camera, and and at the edit edit station. But uh, you know, I I I have some 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 basic knowledge and skill skill sets for for on camera work. I think uh, again to to Christian's strengths. I mean. No one's a better uh, a better announcer than him uh, for these for these games. Uh, you look at you look at the wonderful, uh, very talented people that we have at the desk on a on a regular basis, and and they all shine. And and uh, I, I'm in awe of their of their abilities all the time. So uh, you know I, I I do what I can when asked, but uh, it's not something that I'm actively pursuing. Now. We saw the spectacular, and you know I think everyone in the Schmoville community knows. You know Christian didn't have the greatest showing in yeah. the spectacular. Now, obviously, he had been working on that thing and announcing and wearing many hats, so he couldn't devo- you know devote his full attention to the to the game, perhaps uh, for his match in particular. But in the post match interview, he had some interesting comments. Frank, do you want to remind me what those comments were? Yeah, basically, he said this is all a bunch of BS that you are holding on to the commissioner shift and that he is now challenging you to a match, uh, what seems like for the, the title of com- commissioner. Uh, how do you uh, want to respond to that? Yeah, I, I, I did. I did see that. Uh, I did see that at the end of the at the end of it. I think, you know, he, he had had a long, stressful day and I, I don't. Uh, don't begrudge him at all for uh, for what was said or the the uh, the anger that was behind it. Uh, I know that it wasn't personal at, at all. I think he was uh, caught, swept up in the moment and obviously uh, a little a little upset at his uh, at his showing on the table. Uh, as far as as far as a head to head match with him, I mean, I'm not a singles competitor. Uh, I, I never have been. I've never uh, never requested to, to to join the singles league. Uh, I, I I don't have any intentions of joining the singles league in the foreseeable future, especially while I'm commissioner. Uh, so as of now, I have no intentions of facing him uh, at the table uh, for for this this proposed match of his. Uh, but you know. He can he can ask all he wants, uh, I, but I, I at, at at the moment I I'm gonna gracefully uh, uh, decline his offer. Oh wow, wow! So uh, no no want to get in there with Christian Harloff, especially you know think about it though, Thad. I mean you could you know you could kind of pick up the scraps there. I mean he, he didn't play so well. This might be your opportunity to take over the whole thing. Yeah, I I I I I understand that he's definitely uh, he's definitely seen better days. I just I as of now I I don't I am at at the end of the day still the interim commissioner. I do not want this to be a full time job. I have a full time job, at, and this is not that. So I I have no intention of you know, going in there and, and, and wiping the floor with him and taking over the league. That's not my, that's not what I want. So I don't think that, uh, that it's right for me to, to, to go and, and agree to his challenge because I don't want, uh, to take over the commissionership full time. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see how it plays out. Your mind may change that. I'm just saying anything can happen in the movie trivia showdown. Before we get you out of here, I do have one question for you. One more question for you. You've seen a lot of these matches. You've worked behind the scenes. You've worked in front of the camera. You've had a lot to do with the movie trivia showdown. Uh, Who is your favorite player to watch? And what do you think is your favorite category in the movie trivia showdown? Ooh, those are great questions. Uh, my favorite player to watch uh, this past year, without a doubt, would be Sam Levine. That man laughs off questions like nothing I've ever seen. And when he doesn't know something, he he's very open that he doesn't know it. Uh, but he he brings something to the table like it's it's really indescribable. When he came in uh, towards the uh, towards the end of the season and spun 
was it didn't he spun like spinner's choice and then chose movie release dates i think yes yes yeah yeah and 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 performed incredibly well in a very difficult category that most people spin away from and openly talked about how he is not someone that watches animated films. And then he went and studied animated films so that they wouldn't stump him the next time he landed there. He, 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 his devotion to excelling in the game is like nothing I've ever seen. And he's just a gracious person. And so it's, it's, it's a great combination. Uh, as far as my, you say my favorite category or the yeah. category that I want to get, uh, you know, I, I would actually like to get seventies. Uh, I think that, I think that seventies movies is one of those categories that people kind of wince at when it lands on the wheel. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of seventies cinema. And I think that it's a, is an underappreciated category in the Schmodown. Uh, and so I'd like to, I'd like to kind of give it some love. Do you think you could take Drew McWeeny in 70s? Oh, we God, all no. know he's alive. No, 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 no. I could not take Drew McWeeny. Do not take that, that, that. That's not a challenge to Drew. Uh, much like Sam Drew is a, uh, is an incredible, incredible right. player. Uh, but, uh, I think that Drew notwithstanding, I, I, okay. if I, if I was up against anyone else, I would go, I would go for, for uh, a little known, a little known category. Well, let me ask you this: If it was an all '70s edition of the movie trivia showdown, you and Christian Harloff for the commissionership, would you accept <laughs> under those pretenses? Uh, no, I, I like I I appreciate I appreciate you uh, trying to get that answer out of me, but I uh, I'm still going to politely decline the offer, and uh, you know I'm going to enjoy the rest of my six month tenure, and uh, and then I will happily hand the reins back. To uh, to the man himself. And how many how many months do we have left now? Then uh, uh, by your, by your let's man. See. So he uh, we announced it in the the first week of November. So we played. We had two months of play uh, in 2017, and then uh, the first match is February 2nd. So I guess we'll have four months uh, in into this new season. So May, is what we're, uh, we're looking yeah, at. February, March, April. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, beginning of May. Uh, all right. Well, uh, we'll see what happens in between then. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. But uh, I'm really I'm really looking forward for those first few matches. Uh, we're we're really kicking off the season with a bang, and I think I think everyone's going to be really excited uh, for the stuff that we're doing, and uh, and and we're celebrating everything with the award show. Uh, not n- shortly before that uh, to really kind of remind everyone of the great moments in the past year when there are a lot of great moments and you know what there's going to be more moments in 2018 for the movie trivia showdown thad let people know where they can get in contact with you if they have more questions or they want to uh lay more challenges to you uh to make you accept the christian harloff match where can they find you they can find me on all the social medias uh, at my name it's t-h-a-d-d williams with an s thad williams uh, and if uh, they have any complaints, they can direct them right there, or or they can also at Josh McCuga. Uh, that's my preferred destination for any. Complaint. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thad. Well, we appreciate you, and we're going to see what you do with the rest of your tenor as the interim commissioner. That's Thad Williams, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, then. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, you guys are great. Well, Frank, those were two awesome interviews from Emma Five from Thad Williams. Some insight to both of their careers and both the seasons coming up. I mean, I don't know if we're going to see the Fife Fighters. I kind of like Fife Club. <laughs> I think Fife Club's pretty cool. I like that name. And uh, who knows what we're going to see from Emma Fife. I think we're going to still see some big names added to her faction. I, Rachel Cushing's got to be on her team, right? Uh, I would like to think so. From what I heard there, um, it got the wheels turning just a little bit more. Uh, I'm curious to see who can who can fill in the rest of her faction. So uh, that's another reason why I can't wait for this season uh, to start because I gots to know. You gots to know. We gots to know. But uh, the other thing that I found interesting from our interview with Thad, Thad seems like he wants no part of Christian Harloff. I was kind of shocked by that. Well, I actually, I'm not too surprised. It, it, it seems if, like uh, you're trying to hold on to 
the commissionership, and he seems to think he's doing it in a lawful, uh, contractually obligated manner. Uh, why would he accept this challenge? Uh, um, but you never know what kind of tricks uh, Christian may have up his sleeve to get the commissionership back um, much earlier than May. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward Again, again, I'm just super excited for 2018 to start. Let's just let's just go right now. Come on, <laughs> let's get let's get it underway. Well, hey guys, we'll be back next week here on the Schmodown Rundown. I know some people, you know, some people they, they've 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 wanted so, us to talk about the matches, and we're and we're just another week away. Just give us one more week, and then we'll be back to talking about matches. And Frank, I think we should give him a little tease here, because for the debut of the of the uh, season, the the first match of the season, that triple threat match. We have a very special guest locked in to break down that match with us, and I think the fans are going to love it, Frank. Well, I would be shocked if they didn't. Uh, so be prepared for that. Be be ready. It's going to be a it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time. And then so next week we're going to break down the movie trivia showdown awards as well as a preview for the 2018 season and. Those eight special guest interviews. Yeah, you heard it right. Eight special guest interviews. Ben Bateman, Sam Levine, Lon Harris, Rachel Cushing, Tom Dagnino, Jay Washington, Classy Clark Wolf, and Brianne Chandler all on the Schmodown Rundown next week. Frank, why don't you tell people where they can find you and where they can hit you up, where they can follow you, where they can send your hate tweets. Where can they do that? <laughs> yeah, you can send a lot of hate tweets. And hey, do this better at FrankieJ29 on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> Definitely. And once again, all the Houston Schmovillians out there, send me a message. Send Christian a message. Tweet me at Brad Gilmore, Instagram, Facebook. Find me and let me know if you're out there because we're really working on some awesome, like super special for all you Schmovillians here in H Town. But you can follow me once again at Brad Gilmore. Check out Heated Conversations this week. An awesome, awesome show. Oh, and by the way, available now. On demand, you can see the movie that Brad Gilmore was in. Yes, I was in an independent film what? called Live, Love, Laugh. Yes, I had a small role. I played a guy named Donnie Williams. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, just type in Live, Love, Laugh. You'll find the film. Uh, but until next week, I'm Brad Gilmore. He's Frank Janish. This is the Schmodown Rundown, and we'll see you then.